Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church's Easter worship service. We're recording here in London and sharing our joy across Ontario, across Canada, and across the world. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Got some lovely music for you this morning, and especially we have the setting eight Kyrie that we've actually recorded now, and you'll be hearing that for quite a while now, and it's a lot of joy. So without further ado, Jesus Christ is risen today. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Church for the unity. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, look with loving mercy on your family for whom our Lord Jesus was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hands of sinners and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Gospel according to John, reading from the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one who Jesus loved, and said to them, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb. We do not know where they've laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went to the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw, and he believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting with the body of Jesus, had been lying one at the head, the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and she said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father, your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'm sure you've heard me say before that the gospel of John is not like the other three. The other three are called the synoptics, meaning with one view or with one eye. And they agree with each other for the most part, but John takes a very different approach to writing down the gospel. His was written down much later, and it kind of takes in a bigger theological picture of what's going on, not just reporting the events, but telling you how this all fits together, even to the start of the gospel of John. And you've heard me talk about this before. What are the words that start the gospel of John? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. That's all you need as a person of faith to know that in the beginning refers to, well, the beginning of the Bible. It refers to Genesis when in the beginning God created the world. So John is already tying this picture and the story of Jesus to the original picture of the creation. So is that why John sets this whole story in a garden? And it's not just a garden because he told us so. Mary is telling us so as well. 
she saw Jesus and assumed that he was the gardener. So here we have the whole story brought together. Genesis in the beginning, John telling us that Jesus is part of that, and now John telling us that in the resurrection there is a new garden. Right below me here from the pulpit is the font. It has eight sides. Why does it have eight sides? Again, it ties into the whole story of the Garden of Eden, the garden that John refers to in the beginning, and here, the garden and the resurrection. Six days God worked, one day he rested, and now on the eighth day, new creation has begun in a new garden. And Jesus is that gardener. That's what Mary saw. And he looks at her and says one word for her to understand. Jesus said to her, Mary. So I want you to read that little bit of scripture and add your name in. Supposing him to be the gardener, Mary said to Jesus, Sir, if you've taken him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, I want you to add your own name there. So say with me. And Jesus said to her, I hope you added your own name, because Jesus has come to you in this stage of the garden that we're in now. We are eighth-day people, people of the new creation because he is risen he is risen indeed hallelujah
Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. This week especially we pray for Carol Boyd and her daughter Leanne. And we pray for the family and friends of John Grava who died this last week. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your personal grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. For those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick, in suffering, or in remission. And this week we pray for those in our community who are sick, for Robert and Phoebe Kmith, for Vern Laffler, for Tia Sauter, for Lauren and Jean Keller, for Susan Okunen, Gunter Sturm, Lou Mantle, Mark and Don Cook, Mary Ann Stewart, Carlos and Myrna Rodriguez, and for Dennis Liska. We pray for those who are in retirement or nursing homes. We pray for them, especially in these months and months of isolation. We pray for Sue Pillsworth, Lorreen Baker, Hildegard Beiswinger, Dora Frank, happy birthday, Tilly Heinen, Joy Kunkel, Dorothy Reel, Christine Ruders, Doreen Schweitzer, Karen Stroll, Hans Stuhlmeier, Edith Fama, and Irma Kaiser. We pray for those close to our congregation, for Gilles Grenier, friend of the Becker family, Louis Bailey, sister of Dean Holstein, Deborah Kenny and Bobby Mantle, daughter and son of Lou and Sharon. We pray for Al Barrett, husband of Carol, Jack Kells, son of Madeline, for Steve Hudgens, son-in-law of Linda Reynolds, for Richard Jackman, husband of Nancy, and for Frida Paler, friend of the congregation. We also pray for those that we now name in our hearts. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We praise you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. This week in our prayer cycle, For the Thames Ministry area, we are praying for the people at Trinity. We pray for the staff here at Trinity. We pray for Sister Jean, who isn't at work, but is still connected to us. We pray for myself, Pastor Steve Johnson. We pray for Ross MacDonald, for Randy Sinclair, and for Annette Kentel. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We praise for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming that your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. 
And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with the earth and the sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, we praise and glorify you. We worship and adore you. You formed the earth from chaos. You encircled the globe with air. You created fire for warmth and light. You nourished the lands with water. You molded us in your image and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas. You blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your own. That also we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit. You called us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he broke it. In the night in which Jesus was and in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. And he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and say, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. I invite you now to take the bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. I invite you now to take the drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray with the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord keep you. Make his face to shine. Make his face to shine. Shine upon you. Shine upon you. And may he be gracious to you. And lift up his countenance to you. And give you peace. And give you peace. And give you peace. And give you peace.